Hello class, so today we are going to discuss the recognition of minor 7th, major 7th, and dominant 7th chords. So uh, we are going to listen to each one of these and try to figure out the chord that we hear, whether it's one of the three that we are going to discuss. So first of all, I'm just going to play a bunch of them on the piano and we are going to try to remind ourselves what these chords are. So um, I'm gonna start with the most common or I shouldn't say the most common with the one that we have studied already which is the dominant seventh chord, right? So here's a dominant seventh chord here's another one here's another one another one. Okay. Now, what do all these have in common outside of the fact that uh, they're simply uh, dominant seven chord is for, from the oral perspective? What do they have in common is the fact that, remember, they need to resolve. Dominant seven chords are chords that can't sort of exist on their own. They appear and they need to resolve to a tonic or at least deceptively to the sixth chord, all right? So if I was to play this chord again, the one I played first, this guy needs to go here or maybe here, okay? But nonetheless, it can just sort of stay there and exist on its own. I mean, it can, but it eventually needs to resolve, at least in, in, in obviously, in, in tonal music, in the music that we study right now. So, that's the most important thing about dominant sevens. Remember, once you hear it, if you hear a chord that's unstable, a chord that's dissonant, a chord that, a chord that needs to resolve, it will, uh, it could be, I should say, a dominant seven. Now, let's listen to an example of a major or a minor 7 chord and let's see if we feel the same about them. Here is a major major 7 chord. Here's another one. Here's another, another one. Here is another one. Okay. Now, these are very nice, jazzy, pretty chords, exactly, but do they need to resolve? Do you get the same, I guess, feeling, the same, uh, the same reaction listening to uh, this chord, to listening to this chord, for example? No, right? At least I don't. And the dominant seven, that one needs to, needs to go somewhere. The major seven is simply a major chord with a seven on top that creates more of a color, creates more of a, I guess, of an exotic type of 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 of, uh, of a texture, but it doesn't really affect the chord at all when it says, oh, you, you know, uh, you, it has to resolve a certain way. It's the same with minor seven chords. Let's listen to the minor seven chord. Again, jazzy sounding, a little bit more sad because the minor, the minor chords are, you know, sound more sad than the major. But again, there's really no need for it to resolve. Of course, it's going to go somewhere. The most common use of the minor seventh chord is going from. Have it go from uh, two, five, one, but it doesn't need to necessarily do that. It can it can exist on its own. So now let's look at what these chords are made of, so to speak. Uh, the dominant seven. Remember, it's simply a major triad, do mi so, with a minor seven on top. That is very very important to remember. Any time you have a major triad if that features a seven, if that minor if that seven is of minor quality, 
that chord will become a dominant chord, okay? It doesn't matter what, what key you're in, it doesn't matter if it's a dominant of that key, that chord will, will turn itself into a dominant chord because that minor 7 really affects that major chord, the, the way it needs to resolve. On the other hand, let's look at the major 7 chord. The major 7 chord is simply a major triad, Do, Mi, Sol, that features a, another uh, a fourth note, which happens to be a 7. Okay? Remember, when I build a triad, I, 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 I stack thirds on top of another one. So here's the root, Do. Mi is a third away. Another third from Mi is Sol, Mi, Fa, Sol. And then another third away is T, Sol, La, T. So Do, Mi, Sol, T is actually the major 7 chord, the major 1, 7, we say that is, okay? Um, so in this particular uh, instance, what we have is major chord with a, uh, that features a 7, so it becomes the major 7 chord. The major 7 chord it's also called the major, major 7 chord because the quality of the 7 is a major one. So Do to the T is a major 7. And also the Do, Mi, Sol, the triad is major. Okay, So you have one word for major for the triad, one, one major, and then the other major has to do with the quality of the seventh. But to simplify it, we, we don't call it major, major seven chord, or at least we don't in this class, we simply call it major seven chord. The minor seven chords, okay, is a minor triad, do, me, sol, just like I have it here. You know, so I have a minor chord here. But here I have the exact same chord, except what I have on top is I have a seventh, okay? But that seventh is a minor seven. Because more than likely, whenever you have a minor triad, if it's going to have a 7 uh, added onto it, that 7 will be minor and not major. Okay, So uh, that's why we kind of get that particular jazzy but sadder type of sound. Okay, So just to conclude, here is a dominant 7. And the main thing about the dominant 7 is nothing has changed about it. It still needs to resolve. Or, but for our purpose, let's think about it just resolving to the 1 chord because it will be easier for us to hear it. And then here's the major 7. Nice and jazzy. But it doesn't need to resolve. It could go anywhere and it will still sound good. And here is the minor 7. So on and so forth. Alright guys, I'll see you in class.